So let's talk about the object feature within the Datera product. First, I'm going to log into this uh, demo cluster with my user via LDAP. We have some I.O. running here. Just a quick background on the user interface. We have capacities. We have various statistics in terms of number of provisioned volumes and instances, number of storage nodes that exist in the cluster, um, <clears throat> some graphs on the performance, and then some quick links on how to access functionality, create uh, initiators, or uh, create storage. So the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, briefly is the storage nodes uh, within this system. So this particular Datera system has an Intel Optane node, it's got three all-flash nodes, and it has one hybrid, uh, sorry, three hybrid media nodes. Uh, each of these has their own capacity, they have uh, different capabilities, but what's important is that the uh, Intel Optane node is based on the fastest media that's currently available. The all-flash is SATA, and the hybrid is a collection of SATA and hard drives, you can see that here. Uh, the Datera system allows uh, administrators and operators to mix and match these nodes and then control that through policy. So just to show the policies, these are the placements, the node types. Now what we're going to do for this demonstration is we're going to create a new policy, and I'm going to call this policy object. Actually, let me just state that. Fast object. And I'm going to place this in my tenant. So this policy will only be available for uh, resources that are created within my specific tenant. Um, fast object store. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the system, for the first replica copy, use the Intel Optane media. For the second replica copy, use the all-flash media. And for the third replica copy, use the hybrid media. So as the IOs are transacting, for write IO, it'll go to all three of those server types when, the, when this uh, policy is engaged. But for read IO, it'll start with the Intel Optane, unless that's busy or otherwise occupied, and then we'll move to the all flash nodes. So now we've created a policy. Let's go ahead and create an object store that leverages this policy. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I'm going to select provision storage, and we're going to choose a name. So we're going to call this fast object. We're going to choose the tenant, because I logged in as a system administrator here. Um, the access control is only valid for iSCSI, so we're going to switch that to object store. And now you'll see down here it's got authentication. I'm going to set an access key. I'm going to use a very simple Datera and Datera123. This will not be publicly accessible, so I'm not worried about the key. Then we have a question about IP pool. For this particular deployment, this Datera is using the Layer 3 integration, so we're going to use the default pool. But we could create a specific IP pool for object or uh, on a tenant basis and share via that one. I'm going to go ahead and create a 500 gigabyte volume, or object store if you will, and I'm going to use the three replica copies. And this will use, as we discussed, one copy Intel Optane, one copy on SATA Flash, and one copy on the uh, hybrid. And we'll be able to see that uh, once this gets provisioned. We're not going to enable the QoS, although we certainly can. Uh, this is dynamic. We can turn this on or off at any time. But for now, we're going to leave it off. Uh, not going to create a snapshot. Uh, to be clear, this would be a block-level snapshot, not a file-level snapshot of the objects in the object store. And then here, we're going to choose that fast object. So now, just to review, we have a name, we have a tenant, we have a uh, object store, we have our access keys. Uh, and we have our storage placement using that policy we created previously. So now I'm going to press the provision button. When we provision, the system is going to compose the response. It's going to identify the servers. It's going to um, build this particular volume. If we look here, you can see that I've got the node that's the export. We have the IP addresses, which this uh, object store is available on, the size, the replica count, the attributes in terms of size. Uh, and then down below, we have what nodes does this system appear on. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of nodes here because we spread volumes out uh, based on our algorithms. But you can see I've got a hybrid node, an Optane node, and a Flash node. Now, as a side note, if I change those priority orders, that'll trigger action in the system. But we've set it up correctly so that the Intel Optane is the fastest node and the All Flash media is the, um, is, is the next node and, and hybrid is the third. So what we're going to do now is actually flip over to the Minio side. 
uh, in the, the S3 side. So I'm going to grab this IP address and I'm going to open up a terminal window here. I should be able to ping this address from my host. Now the presentation, the network that these are presented on is the Deterra high-speed network, the access network that all of our uh, customer-facing protocols are on. My laptop uh, that I'm using for this demonstration does not have access to that network, uh, but shortly we'll create a proxy so we can look at the, the browser view of this. So you can see that I can ping the IP. Um, with the Minio technology, there's a command called MC. This is called the Minio client. Uh, you can also use the standard S3 client. Um, and you can use the Minio client to talk to Amazon S3. But for this demonstration, we're going to use the Minio client. So any of the standard tools, uh, S3 command, um, uh, all of the uh, file, FileZilla, all of those commands that can talk to an S3 object store will work with, with Minio uh, and, and the Deterra implementation. So to add this new data store, we're going to uh, open up the configuration file for Minio. Uh, you can see here there's a bunch of defaults, and I've added one for a previous uh, Deterra volume. So I'm just going to copy this guy. Uh, I think it's about seven lines. And then I'm going to paste it in. Just give me one second to get all the numbers addressed. I only really need to edit the, the IP address. Should be there. Uh, and now I need to give it a new name. So let's call this uh, Fast. And I need to correct my JSON. That's just a JSON thing. So I'm good to go. So we can save this now. If I use the MC command, you can do uh, config host list. And now I can see all the different ones that are here. We see that we have fast. Now I can use the MC command to list fast. Nothing is there. So let's make our first bucket. This is the MB command, make bucket on the fast object store and we're going to call this files. It's just successfully created, now it's list and we can see our files is there. Now let's copy in a local file. I happen to use VDBench a lot, I have a copy here. So let's copy in the VDBench to fast files. And now that copied the file to uh, the, the, the min.io. If we now look at this and say ls fast, we can see files is there, files, and we can see our uh, VDBench is present. Now I wanted to show the browser side. This uh, is something that could be enabled uh, by allowing uh, customers in on this on uh, to the uh, access to the browser. For this particular demonstration, I need to do it through the uh, proxy. So what I'm going to do is um, add a line here. I'm going to make this port uh, 9004, and we're going to change this to 128. And what this will just simply allow is my local laptop to reach um, through this server the Deterra backend. So now if I open up a new browser window, TLX241 and do 4, we should see a Minio browser. It's going to ask us for our access and secret. Deterra one two three. Uh, I'll ignore that. Notice that we have, uh, in just the behavior of the Minio technology, um, it automatically defaults to the first bucket. It's just a, a way it works. So we can see our VD bench is, is present, and I can download this file if I want to um, by clicking on it. Uh, we can delete it or download. We can also create objects from here. So if we want to create another bucket like more files, uh, it now created a new bucket that's in the system uh, and so on and so forth. But most of the S3 access uh, and customers are using the uh, the CLI method which does the same thing. So now if we do our ls, let's see ls fast, you can now see we have two different buckets are created. Um, if we explore the MC command a little bit more, there's a uh, admin option, so we can do admin and help. Sorry. Uh, and one of the features of the uh, uh, admin command, let me see if I can get this right, is the users. So we can actually create user roles, policies, uh, and whatnot for various 
uh, object stores. So for instance, we could add a new user. Let me get the syntax here. Um, we can add a new user, WGB, for uh, I believe it's, uh, what's the policy? We'll do uh, write only, just to show it. Ah. So now we've added a new user. If we go and do the list, you can see we've now created a, a new uh, user that can access that. Um, in terms of capabilities, it really depends on what's been implemented in the, the MinIO command. What Deterra does is it orchestrates the MinIO. If there is a failure in the Deterra node, a network issue, the Deterra system will do the work to keep that MinIO instance highly available. Uh, our capabilities to detect uh, uh, corruption at a block level, all of our policy, all these things apply to this particular object store. So using Intel Optane and Flash can be quite expensive for object. If we wanted to, we could change this object store to use, say, uh, hybrid media only. And so this will cause the system to take action and move and migrate the data set to just Deterra hybrid nodes. Uh, when that's done, this uh, warning will clear. But that's the power of the Deterra system. So really what we've done is enabled this Minio, uh, Minio process, uh, which enables the S3 interface through the, the Minio browser. And that's the end of the demo. Thank you. Learn more about how Deterra brings the software-defined revolution to enterprise storage at deterra.io and contact Deterra for a free consultation.